Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network. We are live here, or somewhat live, on the Sports Exchange. We'll be live soon enough. But anyways, we have ourselves a great show lined up. And we're going to lead it off with Ryan Skoru. He's going to talk about some fantasy football. Hey, how's it going, guys? We're doing just fine. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Well, I think the, the, the obvious first news to talk about tonight, um, I think, is is probably the Ron Rivera news. I, don't, I mean, it's, it's hard to say what fantasy impact that's actually going to have um, for these last few weeks as we get into the fantasy uh, playoffs, um, but as of right now, it's, it's definitely interesting that even with just a few games left, that they felt that it was time to make this move. Um, as far as the implications for players, obviously, you know, Kyle Allen really is the only quarterback that they've got. They're not really going to make any wholesale changes, as far as I can tell. Um, as far as the staff is is concerned. The defensive backs coach has now become the, the head coach um, or the interim head coach, and Norm Turner is, is what they're calling special assistant to the head coach, while Norm's son, I believe Scott Turner, becomes the uh, acting offensive coordinator. So we're going to see how that dynamic works. Uh, but definitely, uh, definitely, uh, you know, tough news, especially for Ken Newton. He, he posts a very big. Uh, a very big social media post about uh, about uh, what Ron Rivera meant to him as a, as a head coach. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, with this change being made, how many other wholesale changes over the off season get made. Um, and so, really, I mean, in terms of fantasy um, fantasy news, this more affects, I think, dynasty players and and you know what could be going on in the off season. Okay, well, with uh, leading off with Ron Rivera, what other pointers do you have for everybody out there? Well, um, the, the as far as the uh, as far as uh, some injuries go, um, Ju- both Juju Smith Schuster and James Conner are expected to miss Week 14 um, against the Cardinals. I believe that game is in Arizona, um, so obviously that means um, that, that elevates the, the possible production for. Uh, James Washington and Deontay Thompson, uh, who really are the D two wide receivers for um, the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. It also means that we are going to continue with a timeshare in the running back uh, for the running backs between Jalen Samuels and Benny Snell. Um, and so it's really in terms in terms of this game, I think um, them missing time will mean more for James Washington. And then also for Vance McDonald, you know, I, we keep saying over and over and over again how bad the Arizona Cardinals are against tight ends. Well, they proved it again last week when Tyler Higby, the backup tight end for the um, for the L.A. Rams, was the number one tight end in fantasy. Um, you know, and that's not the first time that a backup tight end has been a top three tight end in fantasy going up against the Arizona Cardinals. So, um, you know, Ross Dwelly. The backup at at uh, San Francisco for the 49ers is another guy that's done you know the same thing. So uh, Vance McDonald should be in for a good game. He should be you know get open wide open uh, in multiple occasions and should finish this game with at least one touchdown. So as far as those injuries are concerned, I think it's big for James Washington and especially for um, for Vance McDonald in this game coming up uh, in Week 14. Which, be, which again, you know, first round of fantasy playoffs for those uh, teams that, or for those leagues that do three week playoffs. Um, this is the beginning. So, um, another another injury to look at is Dalvin Cook. Uh, we talked about uh, um, last night in the waiver wire. Um, you know, one of the guys that had been mentioned in uh, in uh, articles on SpokingFootball.com on my website. Uh, Alexander Madison is the guy that had been mentioned. If you own Dalvin Cook, he's the guy that should be picked up. But then in the Monday Night Football game last night, Dalvin Cook um, sat the entire second half after getting hit in the hit kind of in the chest and shoulder area. Well, what happened was it looked like he re-aggravated or re-injured. Um, it's not broken, but it's it's basically like a bone bruise of his clavicle injury uh, of his clavicle his, his collarbone. Um, which he got hit in the game against the Broncos. 
So um, he says that he should be good to go for this next week. That being said, it could open up a big door for Alexander Madison to get a whole lot more playing time against the Detroit defense that, you know, is another one of those that, you know, couldn't stop, you know, running waters, you know. So um, I think that uh, their defense should open up a lot of holes if Alexander Madison plays for him to be able to produce quite well in the first round of the playoffs. So that's another major injury that I, that I think could be – could be very uh, influential in how teams create their lineups for the defensive backs. Okay. And Carson and Penny may become a better version of Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, it, yes. And if you look at what's happened the last couple weeks, uh, the Minnesota Vikings, now I understand that Kirk Cousins on the offense has had his struggles on Monday Night Football. He is now 0-8. He is now officially the worst starting quarterback in Monday Night Football history. Um, that being said, that has nothing to do with the fact that the Minnesota Vikings have the number five run defense and got absolutely mowed over and had 100. I think the, the Seattle Seahawks had 140 rushing yards by the third quarter. Um uh, Rashad Penny had over 100 combined yards last night. Um, you had you had Carson, who finished with over 100 rushing yards and a touchdown. Penny had two touchdowns himself. Um, and, and so if you look at the way that they're starting to split them up, that Penny's really getting going. Jamal Lewis, or Jamal Williams was a, was a constant contributor all throughout this season. And really, we you, we looked at a lot of split time, not knowing which which player was going to be the guy to get all the work. Well, uh, between him and Aaron Jones. Well, now they're kind of leveling it out, but the Seahawks are really getting their their feet going. And so I think that uh, that with how this offense is getting going in Seattle, those two could produce very well as an RB two and a flex play, even better than Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams have so far this season. Okay, let, let's go over a couple of other pointer things that came to mind. David Johnson, what's going on with him? He doesn't seem to be playing much these days out in Arizona. David Johnson is dealing with, is, has been dealing with a back injury most of the season. Um, and so he he's basically, um, they're kind of managing him for right now and just using Kenyon Drake uh, as, the, as the main running back. So I don't think he's ever fully healthy. I think they should have just put him on IR. Um, but with all the injuries that they've had to deal with, in the running backs, it, you know, they haven't really had much of a choice. So, have they? If you're a fantasy person, you have David Johnson. Do you keep him or do you add somebody else? I would add somebody else. Okay, and obviously we know this Cardinals Steelers game is a rematch of Super Bowl Forty Three. Which, by the way, I was at that game when I saw that long touchdown by James James Harrison. Harrison, that's it. There that was, that was some great plays there. So. You know, for those history buffs, you know, obviously the players are different, but a little bit of a Super Bowl rematch nonetheless. How about some observations last night of the Seattle Seahawks 37-30 to win over Minnesota in your neck of the woods? Well, as far as the, Se- as far as the Seahawks go, um, the it always seems to be some sort of pressure cooker type of game. Um you know the the hashtag the hashtag going around in Seattle is is the Seahawks always get my blood pressure going. Um, no matter what the game, so you know it looked like they had it pretty much sealed up uh, with the the interception and touchdown in the beginning, or or the interception uh, at the end of the third, and then uh, the the touchdown in the fourth to go up by what was it seventeen points or so, um, and then you know next thing you know they're allowing a few plays. Pass interference, the thirty-yard pass interference call gets play, gets called. So I mean, as far as the offense goes, it's it's concerning for guys like Tyler Lockett who have not gotten the amount of um, targets over the last few weeks. Really, the the target share has gone to guys like Jacob Hollister. Um, uh, you know, even David Moore has gotten more targets uh, over the last couple weeks than. Than Tyler Lockett has, and for a guy who is you know a top 
top 15 wide receiver for the you know the first half of the season it's definitely been concerning i don't think his leg is an issue uh but if you're it, it could be hard to trust him going into the fantasy playoffs um russell wilson is going to do russell wilson things he is going to finish with usually um you know 200 to 250 passing yards and at least a couple touchdowns that's just what he does uh, Carson and Penny seem to really have created a, a good, um, a solid core uh, for offense in the running back positions. I think both could be very solid producers in the fantasy in the fantasy uh, fantasy playoffs. And as far as the uh, as far as the the Vikings go, um, I still think they have a solid defense to be used in the fantasy playoffs depending on the matchup. I think next week against Detroit is, is a good matchup to have them for. Uh, Kirk Cousins is still a solid quarterback, still put up decent numbers, just wasn't wasn't uh, timely enough to get the win. Uh, and Stefan Diggs, again, should be a solid contributor. I think that he'll do better, though, once Adam Thielen gets back. And if Adam Thielen gets back, I believe that creates more of a two-headed monster uh, to provide more open areas for for digs to get open um, if the Lincoln can pull some coverage. So. All right, let's talk about a Seattle note in per se that took place, and that's Chris Peterson stepping down as coach for the Washington Huskies. Yes. Um, that was definitely, for, for a lot of fans, it was surprising. Apparently for a lot of people around Chris Peterson, it was not surprising. Um. You know, there's a lot of there's already speculation that oh he's going to go to USC or he's going to go to somewhere else and and honestly for me I don't see him going to USC. Um, he is he is very much a quiet, doesn't like the limelight if he doesn't have to be in it kind of a guy. Um, and so I think that he steps back into. I mean, he even in his press conference said. I'm not going to fall into the trap of saying I'm never going to coach again. Football is going to be there for me somehow. He just doesn't know what capacity that's going to be. So I think that he may step back into coaching, but after you know eight years at at, um, at Boise State and then six years in in Washington at the UW, and having the un you just unbelievable career that he has and the winning percentage that he has had um, you know that takes a lot of a lot of work a lot of effort and I think that you know it's it very well could just be burnout especially when you consider how much work that coaches have to go into with the recruiting and all that um, and basically sucking up to a bunch of teenagers to try to get them to come to their school I can see how it that is just a grind that that can only last for so long. Yeah, let me add to that too. I, I would see Peterson possibly looking at NFL things down the road. There are it's not uncommon for college coaches to want to go in the NFL with the right situation. So that's something I would wonder about. And one last thing I want to mention: what are what are they talking about? Mike Leach's uh, feet down of a reporter in light of uh, what took place. My, I mean, he came across as pretty upset. going on with him. Mike Leach is a character in and of himself. Right. Um, the the reporter that he went off on was is a guy that writes for the, um, the one of the Spokane newspapers, which is just north of Pullman. Um, Spokane's the second large, the second or third largest city in the state of Washington. Um, and the reporter basically got on, basically just kind of been poking at Mike Leach, Leach's entire career. And this being, I want to say, either the sixth or no, this is the seventh consecutive season that Wazoo, Washington State, has lost to Washington uh, in the Apple Cup. Um, and so, uh, definitely, uh, it, I think it was just it was just a, enough of a enough of a poke and poke and poke that um, this reporter's kind of been poking holes in 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 Leach's career at Washington State and how he's you know never really been able to win the big one. Um, and since um, even you know, I want to say even the year before, um, since Peterson got to Washington, um, you know, what, uh, the Cougars just have not been able to overcome uh, the Huskies in the in the uh, in the Apple Cup, even when they've had probably better teams. Okay. So I think it was just I think it was just a. a-